Hey there, folks. Uh, welcome back to my um, never-ending existential nightmare. Uh, today, I've got something real special to go through. Um, I'm going to treat this like a regular video, even though there's a not zero chance that it never actually goes up, but in the off chance it does, hey there, welcome. Thanks for uh, thanks for clicking on this. Thanks for checking it out. I'm I'm sure I'm sure there will be something interesting at the at the uh, conclusion of this video, at the very least. Anyway. I've got a brand new design, a prototype piece of hardware from Frago Customs. Um, Fro Frago Customs? I don't know. I know I, I know him as Frago. Um, his GitHub username, Lego My Frago. Um, anyway, doesn't matter. He started working on a project that um, I actually had the idea for as well. Not not saying my idea influenced him or, or anything of the sort. Just that. You know he he has good taste. We both had we both had fantastic ideas. He was just um, much more better equipped to uh, deliver on this. But anyway, I've got a box full of parts here. I've got a Game Boy Color that um, will come into play later. This has a backlight kit in it that we probably need for for this build later. Um, I'm fairly certain this is. The correct backlight kit, uh, but I don't, I don't know if we'll get that far yet. We still have a whole PCB to assemble, um, which I guess gets us to the next point. Um, this is a prototype, so nothing I'm showing off should be taken as, as gospel for the final product here. Um, it is my understanding that the project is going to work as follows, uh, assuming everything goes as planned plans can change. Um, the idea is from Frago, you can buy this nice custom uh, glass lens. Um, it's got these nice 2.5D corners, uh, plain black bezel, nice and printed with a little LED hole and adhesive backing on it already. It's, it's actually quite fantastic. Um, I I believe Frago is planning on selling these on, on his site or Etsy or something. Uh, you, you'll be able to get these from Frago nonetheless. Um, he'll probably include some stickers. He certainly included some stickers with, uh, with this thing. Uh, in fact, I think it's about time. Uh, I, I like the capacitor one. It's fantastic, but I think... That one deserves to go under there for now. Uh, anyway, and then we've got the business end, the main board here. Um, is also included this custom ribbon cable that we will need for connecting up the backlight kit later. Uh, and he's also included two 3D prints. Um, I knew about the light pipe. I did not know about the cart shield, so I have ordered also several cart shields. Um, so now I have three cart shields. Um, but that's okay. I also ordered some extra volume wheel prints. Um, probably won't need any of this stuff. I just kind of ordered it for spare parts because I was already making an order anyway and it was only a few extra dollars. Why not? Ah, uh, but we've also got the, uh, housing for this bad boy as well. So I went ahead and ordered this in CNC machined aluminum. Uh, I went with a two-tone color scheme because that's what I wanted. And um, I don't know if we get that far, I'll, I'll, I'll show off why I chose these specific colors. But there are three pieces to this shell. There is the front, uh, which looks kind of reminiscent of his Frog Boy color, at least with the A and B, A and B button angles. Um, but otherwise, you know, it looks kind of like a Game Boy Pocket, but a lot smaller. For comparison, here is a regular Game Boy Color. You can see how much tinier this is. It's like the Game Boy Micro of uh, Game Boy Colors. It's fantastic. I am I'm so stoked to assemble this thing. And then we've got the back here. It's about as small as you can get one of these bad boys, but that still supports actual regular size non-custom cartridges. And oh, that's actually a uh, 
a neat little unexpected bonus if you happen to use this with an Easy Flash Junior, you have easy access to the SD card. Didn't think about that. That's neat though. Um, but yeah, just like the Frog Boy color, it's got a a uh, little rotary encoder on the front for volume control. In my particular case, I got one. I I got the uh, volume knob cut from brass. Uh, it's got some got some really nice knurling on there. It's pretty dope. Uh, but anyway, this is a beta. Um, the specific board I have has an X4 designation, which I'm guessing Frago was basing his uh, motherboard designations off of what Nintendo does. Um, so this is most definitely a prototype. But as you can see from the the board layout itself, we've got a we've got to install quite a few components here, um, and there's not a lot of room. I did not plan this out as well as I perhaps should have. Thankfully, I had a SP cart slot kind of just hanging around. Um, otherwise, I'd, I'd have need to, to buy one of these. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's, it's designed or at least intended for the aftermarket cart slots, but I have an OEM one here that I'm going to try and, and see if it fits. Um, I don't expect any issues. Um, yeah, it should be good. I mean, all, all, the, all the pins and... You know, all the important bits line up, so I think we'll be fine. But set that aside, that is one of the last parts we install here. Um, and then I've got a whole baggie full of parts from Mauser here. And uh, if all goes well, all these are going to end up on this. And by the end of the night, we're going to have a working Game Boy. But um, that's not how things are going to go. I don't know that I have the attention span to sit through this entire build process and, and finish this out in one in one sitting, which is fine, I guess. This is a pre-recorded video. I don't have to do that. It's not it's not live, you know. I can I can I can take my time. Um so yeah, I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and set this stuff aside for Nihu and we shall circle back. Where did I put I, we're not even 10 minutes into the video and I already lost the box. Oh, there it is. Okay. And I've got the, whoops, doodle. Got the donor Game Boy Color that we're gonna be using for this. Um, for projects like this, you know, total motherboard replacements, I always, 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 always recommend testing the donor first and making sure it actually works. Um, I'm not going to do that in this case, only because I've already done it. I already know this board works despite how horrifying it looks. Believe me, I was just as surprised as, as you might be that, <laughs> that this thing totally works. The only thing I haven't tested is sound and, uh, oh, this cord's not long enough. Ugh. Don't worry. I've got an idea. I'll just plug it into my laptop instead. Haha. <laughs> Believe me, I was just as surprised as you are. Um, it did work at one point. It's not working now. Last time I tried this thing, it worked. Uh, but it's got no speaker plugged in, so we can't test audio. Um, the power switch is fine, but the um, LCD connector is broken, so we can't test that. This volume wheel is covered in God knows what. I genuinely have no idea, but thankfully the only things we need to actually salvage from this are the CPU and the SRAM and technically the link port, but I already have new replacements. So we're not gonna use this one because it's also covered in God knows what. Um, but I have a little bin here full of parts and I'm fairly certain there's new, um, Oh, hey, look, more stuff from Frago. Um, I, I, I thought there was some new parts in here somewhere. I don't know. L lots of things I never actually got to. But we'll... That's one of the last things that gets installed, so I'm not too concerned. Oh. That was the wrong drawer. Here's a brand new connector. Wait, that's a GBA one. That's also a GBA one. I thought I had Game Boy Color ones in here. 
All right, well, I guess I'll just have to salvage one from another board then, because I don't have new Game Boy Color ones like I thought I did. These are all Game Boy Advance. Uh, the Advance has that extra little notch at the top, whereas the Color does not. And while that doesn't make a difference, um, I'm fairly certain it's not going to fit in the housing, because I don't think the housing accounts for that. Let's take a quick peek. Yeah, the housing doesn't have that extra notch makes sense because it's not designed for that. Okay, that's fine though. I have other ones that I can salvage. Does not matter. It just means I can't do it yet. Uh, it's weird. I, I, I set aside multiple Game Boys for this. I'm like, oh yeah, I have this Game Boy. We'll, we'll take this one apart and convert it. And then I found this one. I'm like, oh yeah, we'll take this one apart and convert it because it has the same LCD connector and broken power switch. Uh, same LCD connector issue and a broken power switch, but it's also definitely working. Um, I bet this one actually boots though. So worst case scenario, I can use that. Well, kind of, sort of. Screen's not working, but <laughs> it's because there's no screen plugged in. <laughs> yeah, it, it's probably working fine, but with no screen plugged in and no audio, there's really no way to tell aside from the power LED. But um, you'll just have to take my word. This thing did work at one point. It probably still works. Uh, anyway, let's stop rambling and actually get started. This is going to be a long video. Anyway. Uh, heat. How do I start this thing? I forgot, okay. I got the uh, new MHP 50 hot plate. Oh, come on. It has a tilt sensor in it, so if you do that, it thinks you've knocked it over and it stops heating up, um, which is actually a really nice safety feature, but in this specific case, it's throwing me off. I like the uh, MHP 30. Um, it's actually a really fantastic hot plate for this sort of thing. Uh, it looks small, but realistically, I mean, it's it's big enough for this kind of job. Um, and the small size helps it heat up nice and quick. Uh, but I've got the bigger one now, so I'm gonna use the bigger one. And we need to pull these two chips. Um, the very least I think I think that's all we need because we're not reusing this crystal oscillator because this thing's freaking huge um, and everything else on here we're using aftermarket replacements for uh, one one cool thing Frago implemented well Frago implemented multiple cool things um, Almost all of the circuits in this thing are redesigned, as far as I can tell. I, I think he's using the exact same tried and true design that uh, he has implemented in the Frog Boy Color, which is the Game Boy Advance shaped Game Boy Color thing. Um, I never actually built one of those. It's pretty cool, but I I like specific form factors. I'm waiting for this thing to heat up anyway, so might as well ramble for a bit. I like the Game Boy Pocket um, form factor. Realistically, almost all of the games I play on Game Boys and Game Boy Colors specifically are Pokemon or ROM hacks thereof. Uh, and so, you know, the controls are really simple. Let's, let's, let's get real. It's all turn-based. Um, the controls are simple. You only ever have to hit one button at a time. So I like this form factor because I could just play it one-handed. That's nice. I enjoy that. Um, I don't know, it's it's just how I am. You can't do that with a Game Boy Advance style form factor, but if that's not important to you, it literally does not matter. Um, but for me, I thought it was important, so I just never pursued that. Um, but it is a really cool mod. I recommend checking it out. Um, that being said, it is not a beginner soldering project. If you are new to soldering, this especially is gonna be hella difficult. There is not a lot of room to work in here. Um, but the Frog Boy color is a little bit bigger. Things are a little bit more spaced out. It's quite a bit more forgiving to actually work on. Um, and as of 
right now, you can get them partially assembled at the very least. You still need to BYO, CPU, SRAM, and cart slot at the very least, but I think everything else, oh, and the link port, just about everything else you can get sought, you can get pre-assembled if you're willing to pay the premium. All right, so real quick, um, I am currently working off beta, you know, I'm working with a beta board. Uh, things are gonna be a little bit different on the final release. I'm working off non-finalized uh, documentation. Um, a big part, a big reason why I'm helping beta test this along with a few other um, unnamed people are we're trying to make sure the documentation is good for general release. So I don't wanna go over it too much. Um, in fact, I'm just gonna briefly flash up here. It, th there is a GitHub for it. It will be public probably by the time this video goes up, at the very least. Um, but I'm going to be following along with these instructions here, as well as the I-bomb for assembling this board. I'm just going to set this off to the side. And that's all you're going to see of that, because, like I said, non-final. I don't want to get anyone... Um, I don't want anyone to use this video as reference for the final one because Frago is going to be making his own video, and I guarantee you it's going to be more appropriate than this video is. So, I, you know, I'm, I, I am gatekeeping just a little bit, but there's a good reason for it. Uh, but otherwise, let's get this stuff off here. A little bit of flux on here. to get ventilation. Maybe that, maybe that should be a hint. Oh, I already fucked up. Didn't bend any, any of the pins though, so just set that off to the side. I have a brand new tool from Hacko that is literally intended for pulling these chips off. Uh-oh. That is literally intended for pulling these chips off, and I'm not using it because I just thought about it now and forgot. Boy, that is stinky. I don't know whatever this stuff is. I kind of don't want to know, but it's not, not pleasant smelling. <coughs> Okay, set that aside. See what the damage is on this CPU I just dropped. Oh, wonderful. Look at all those bent pins. We're off to a fantastic start. Ugh. And bend some of these back. At least get them in the ballpark and then I'll fix it later. So first and foremost, I highly recommend not dropping the CPU or any of the parts for that matter. <laughs> all right, that's probably as good as it's gonna get. Um, all right, so Frago has a build order recommendation for this board uh, that I would like to follow, but also I would really like to use this hot plate to assemble most of this board because I'm, gonna have a real hard time getting in here with my soldering iron to correct any shorts on this thing um, and let's be real there's gonna be shorts and because I'm doing surface mount soldering I really think I should switch to the J tip so I might as well do that before I turn the soldering iron on and we'll save the K tip for later uh oh 
Um, because getting in and doing surface surface level work with that sharp tip does not bode so well. Uh, rework is fine, but I don't know. All right. What is the orientation on that? I don't see an orientation marker for the CPU. Uh, except that there isn't something in this corner, so I'm guessing that's pin one. There's a little uh, 90 degree bracket in the other three corners. Um, I'm going to refer to reference pictures for orientation on these two parts, because I don't... I don't trust myself to get that right. Otherwise, okay. And, thankfully... There exists exactly that. Um, not yet on the GitHub, but I'm not the first one to build one of these things, so I could just reference other people's pictures. Uh, okay, so first thing that Frago recommends installing are the um, tactile switches, so the D-pad A, B, start and select here. Um, and the reason being because once you've got this side of the board populated, you can no longer put put it down on a hot plate to solder these switches. However, I want to do the opposite of that. I want to install the components on this side using the hot plate, which means I have to install the switches later. Um, I, I do trust that Frago's recommendations are the proper recommendation. You know, that's, that's gonna make assembling this thing quite a bit easier. Um, but that being said, I don't think that his instructions assume you're going to be doing all of this stuff with the hot... Well, his, his instructions assume you're not going to be doing any of this with the hot plate, which is the opposite of what I want to do. I think doing this stuff specifically with the hot plate is a good idea, just because I don't know how I'm going to get in here otherwise with the soldering iron. Um, I don't know. Maybe it'll be fine... But I'm thinking, I'm thinking the play here is to use the hot plate and solder paste and then flip it over and then do these switches by hand. Uh, let me get, let me get, let me get, let me get my reference. And da, 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 da. Another thing, um... Conventionally, when, when assembling boards like this, it's almost always easier to do the smallest parts first before the bigger parts so that you don't have to work around the big parts while you're assembling things. But honestly, with how close the CPU is to everything else, I think I'm going to start with the CPU just because clearing any shorts because i there, there's going to be shorts especially after i bent the stupid pins on the freaking thing um i'm thinking it'll be easiest to clear the shorts when there's nothing else installed and i think that me in particular i'm going to struggle with that if i if i don't do it in that order so that's the plan um that and the longer I leave this CPU on my desk, the more likely I am to bend the pins again. I'm sorry, I thought I had solder paste set aside. I clearly do not. That's a problem. What's that? That's a flux pin. Oh, there it is. Behind my flux pin. I literally grabbed that retro pixel pocket and moved my flux, or my uh, solder paste, to grab it. But anyway, this goes a bit like that. And the SRAM goes like that.
it's all dried up. Coming out crusty. Maybe I'm not doing this today. Yeah, maybe it'll be fine. That's going to be messy, but I guess that's okay. Get that about right, and I'll have to fix it later, especially with those few remaining bent pins. That's one of the reasons I'm doing this first. Got to turn my solder iron on. Wow, did I get the alignment right first try? I swear that almost never happens. Okay, dope. Can use the noise and tacky flux in the soldering iron to go over it by hand and clean up all the shorts. Oh, and I did not get the alignment correct. That's okay. And apologies if I'm a little bit loopy. Um, I figured with things as close together as they are, I, I stand a much more solid choice at, or much more solid chance at getting this assembled if I'm lubricated, so. Let's go. It is an actual thing. I'm not making it up. Even the name sounds made up. It's called the Balmer Curve. And I don't know if it's like officially a thing or if it's unofficially a thing, but so unofficial that so many people are still using it that it might as well be official. I don't know. But it's a thing. You look it up. You'll figure out exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, the alignment on top is perfect. Way too much solder, though. Perfect. 
I'd be lying if I said I wasn't concerned about assembling in this order, though, uh, because we haven't even done the power supply yet. And so I'm going to be building up the power supply in a few moments, and, well, with the CPU attached, I will be providing the CPU power to test the power supply. Like, that's, that's just how that's going to go. So if there is a problem with that, I do risk blowing up this CPU. Um, I mean, it's not the end of the world if I do. It's not like this is my only donor Game Boy. But, you know, that is, that is wasteful, so I'd certainly like to avoid blowing up a Game Boy if I can afford it, or if I can avoid it. Pads are so short, it's very hard to swipe off extra solder. Not exactly a criticism, because I kind of knew what I was getting into. Um, that's like literally the whole point of this thing. But still. Okay. I need to fix the alignment, which is a shame. Because on three of the four sides, it is spot on. It's just that fourth side. And I know I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again, this is not a beginning soldering project. If you're watching me do this kind of stuff, know that I have been doing this kind of stuff for years. And I guess I tend to make it look easy. I, I guess that's just a side effect of having experience. Um, I don't necessarily mean to, but I do. So if you're if you're uh, relatively new to soldering and you're watching me uh, talk through while I'm installing these parts and thinking, well, if he can, if this, if this guy, I must use words that YouTube doesn't like anymore, if this guy can do this while inebriated and talk through it at the same time, it must not be that difficult. But really, this specific board intimidates me like nothing else. Um, and I'm thinking that assembly is gonna be one of the more, one of the most difficult boards that I've ever assembled. Uh, just because there is exceptionally little room to work with in here. Let's add a little bit more looks up. So it's not that it's technically difficult to do, but more, if you mess up, there's very little room to fix it. I don't let that heat back up, I guess. taken way too long. My laptop has gone to sleep twice already. Alright. After we get the switches installed, per Frago, our next step ought to be setting up the power supply, which is what I will do next. Um, I'm just, instead of installing the switches, I'm installing the SOC first. And then I need to let that heat back up and then just nudge the CPU just a hair to get the uh, right side aligned. It's probably fine. I think it's close enough. But it's going to be really difficult to fix uh, if I'm wrong. 
because uh, once we've got the cart slot installed, I won't be able to use hot air to move the CPU. And once we've got the button switches installed, I won't be able to use the hot plate either, which makes fixing the alignment exceptionally difficult if I wait. So I'm gonna not wait. I'm just gonna not take the chance. And while we're at it, let's let's give it a little bit more flux. How about why not? More flux, more better. Okay, I think I've got it aligned. And that's solidified. Okay, so now I can handle it. Inspect. Oh, and look at that perfect alignment. I don't even have to fix the pins that I totally bent. We'll just we'll just pretend that it's always been like that and um, deflect blame when it doesn't boot carts. Oh, I think there's a short though. Yeah, that looks good. A lot of flux between the legs, so I'm just kind of burning it off and making sure there's no shorts. I will clean up all of the flux later. This thing's getting an ultrasonic bath. Okay. Let's double check my bent pins are actually soldered though. One of them definitely isn't. Easy fix, but glad I checked. Uh, beautiful, that's definitely soldered now. I think we're good. 40 minutes in and I've just got the CPU installed. Sheesh.
Uh, do look good though. I'm a little nervous. But I think we'll be fine. All right, let's move on. Next up, we gotta do power, which consists of three different areas of the board. There is this resistor up on top of the speaker cutout area, some components below the speaker cutout area, and then this entire corner. <laughs> Um, that being said, I think with how my parts are organized, I'm going to not do it that way. Um, I know exactly what I just said and Frago's recommendations do make sense, but I'm just worried about, um, me losing parts and getting distracted. I'd rather go through and go, okay, this is a 3.3K ohm resistor, which according to the I-bomb, there's only one of, yet I have 30. <laughs> uh, and it goes on R18, <laughs> which is not power supply related. So that's, that's nice. I'm, we're, we're just going to come back to this one. <laughs> okay. This is speaker. We'll come back to that too. Which next we have 22 picofarad multi-layer ceramic capacitor. There are two. Uh, neither for the power supply. We'll skip for now. So next we've got fuses. I know one of these, one of these, are there two fuses or just one? There's two. Uh, I guess these are technically power supply related, but I'll go back to that too. Uh, MOSFET. What am I looking at here? Where's the part number? Here's the part number. Uh, MOSFET is gonna be, it's three pins, so what, probably a Q designation? Or U, I wonder if it's Q1 or U1, let's find out. Uh, definitely not U1, probably Q. Where the hell are the Qs? Oh, there it is. Uh, DMP6350 SQ1, uh, SQ7 is Q1, ha! I got it right. Kinda. This is gonna go very slowly at this rate though. All right, this is done. Let's set this aside in a different box. Hey babe. Add some solder paste, install the component, and then we gotta cook it. But I think I can do more parts before I throw it on the hot plate. Thick film resistor, 200K ohm. Where are my resistors? 200K. R4 is oof. Show a little toy. 
Mouser, why, why, are you, why are you gotta, why are you gotta hurt me like this? With your stupid staples. Stupid bag. I'm starting to think that at this rate, I might pause this recording for a little while and just um, keep working away at this. The pace for this thing is, well, this is pretty much what I'm going to be doing, uh, but for the next two hours or so, and I don't think that I want to sit here and generate footage for that long, um, nor do I think that anyone is actually going to appreciate just me doing my best pick-and-place machine impersonation. aligned and then really I'm just gonna go through each component one by one doing exactly that with the uh, solder paste and then I'm gonna come in here drop this on the hot plate and let the parts cook into place rinse repeat that resistor popped right into place the MOSFET popped right into place we're gonna be fine. And then I'll let the board cool. Um, realistically, I don't wanna, I wanna do as few heat cycles as possible, so I want to do more parts at a time instead of just two, but I just kinda wanted to show off more or less um, what I'm gonna be doing. And now I'm gonna pause recording while I go through all of these. I'm gonna do every single component in this corner the exact same way. Uh, I suppose I will start recording again once I get into some of the weirder components like the USB Type-C port or the uh, link port, which I might actually not be doing today, but through the magic of video editing, you won't actually be able to tell. Um, yeah, I think we'll be good. So bear with me a moment and uh, I'll be back. All right, through some sort of um, strange freak incident, um, coincidence of nature, I have managed to install all of the components except for the switch. Um, I have made several mistakes along the way. I highly recommend following Frago's instructions, uh, because the path that I decided to take was, um, not great. Uh, it definitely added some issues. Uh, I decided to switch to the old MHP-30 instead of the MHP-50, mostly because I was taking a little bit long, um, taking quite a bit, quite a bit of time between cycles, and, uh, I don't know, the, the shorter cycle time of the MHP-30 ended up having, having to work out a little bit better than the MHP-50 for me, um, but that is also likely related to my uh, failures to plan appropriately for this. Uh, so what I have left are the um, switches. I guess I'll go ahead and do that on camera. Oh, I should probably mute that before I get um, for before YouTube has a problem with me. Hang on. Uh, I have not tested this yet. And um, I'm thinking that maybe I'm going to wait until after I run this through the ultrasonic to give it a test. Uh, we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need that many switches, give or take. Apologies in advance. I uh, I tried to maintain a buzz to um, make this a little bit easier for me, and unfortunately, I went a little bit too hardcore with the uh, the soldering supplies, as it were. Uh, so all that's left is the link port 
and the button switches. I have not tested this at all. Uh, I plan on running this through the ultrasonic before I even attempt to give it a shot. Come on. But I do have to get the buttons soldered on. Might as well do that. This stupid grip on my soldering iron is driving me crazy. I'm thinking I just need to glue it to the stupid thing. All right. So these switches, I'm gonna go ahead and solder down one corner at a time. Or not. Just a little bit of flux for each of these things. Man, I am not having a good time. I think I need to come back to this tomorrow. I think I've been working at this too long. It is several hours later. And, uh, yeah, I think it's time for a break. I'll come back to this later. I'm not having a good time. I got everything else soldered aside from the switches. I have not tested this yet. I need to run it through the ultrasonic at least once. Um... I need to get the cart slot soldered in still, and I need to get the button switches soldered in. But I think I'm gonna mess with that off camera because I have been at this, it is 10.30. I think I started about three and a half hours ago. And uh, I am several alcohols deep and I am not doing myself any favors. So uh, we'll come back to this. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all next time. All right, today is a new day and um, getting pretty close to finishing this up. I went ahead and soldered up uh, six, <laughs> counting, I'm good at it, I swear, <laughs> uh, six of the eight tactile switches. Um, I was not having a good time when I finished off and I wasn't thinking clearly, so I decided to take a break and uh, sleep it off as it were, and I'm glad I did because... Now that I've come back to this, soldering these switches is a lot easier than whatever the hell I was trying last night. Uh, so I switched back to the K-tip. It's so much easier for this sort of thing. Um, and yeah, just soldering the switches in one by one uh, and on this sticky, messy board. Uh, but I think we'll be all right, because uh, once I'm done here, I can go ahead and throw this in the ultrasonic and uh, it'll come out beautiful. You won't even be able to tell that I had my hands on it. It's great. These switches are super easy to solder by hand. Of course, naturally. I'm kidding, I totally recommend following uh, Frago's instruction here and doing these first with the hot plate. I'm going to struggle with this one. What was the pad? I did not tin. There we go. Okay. Now that all 
for soldered. Let's make sure it's nice and flush. Easy. And last one. I have not done any testing yet whatsoever. No idea if this is gonna work. I'm feeling relatively confident, but um, I don't, I haven't been doing my best work lately, so. I don't wanna make any promises. I was pretty surprised to come back and see the USB port on this thing already. I don't I don't remember installing that. Also, I had an idea uh, yesterday while I was I was uh, thinking about the order of operations for assembling this thing, and um, despite making a plan, I did not adhere to that plan. Um, wow! What a what a surprise! Mako didn't follow a plan. You're right. I didn't, but I planned to. Um, I don't know what happened. Anyway, I was thinking about the order of operations for this, and my chief problem was that I was afraid to solder up these switches, uh, these little tack switches by hand. <coughs> Whoops, I'm getting the uh, desoldering iron ready. Um, I was afraid to sol solder these up by hand, and um, it is kind of difficult. I can't desolder any of these switches without totally destroying them, which I guess is really not the end of the world. They're dirt cheap. I have a ton. Uh, that's not the bag that I thought it was. I don't know. I have the bag that I just ordered and several other bags as well. Um, we're going to be pulling the link port off of this Game Boy Pocket that I just found in, in my uh, parts bin. I mean, the thing's pristine. Looks fantastic. Uh, so let's salvage it for parts. Oh, I didn't even check, but it's a good thing my desoldering iron has the correct tip on it. Um, anyway. A <coughs> little bit distracted. My apologies. <coughs> um. <coughs> Soldering those switches by hand was really not that bad. Um, I was stressing out about something that was totally a non-issue. I, I don't know, not stressing out. I think that's disingenuous. But I was concerning myself overly. Um, <coughs> for something that turned out to not be difficult. <laughs> that being said, I did come up with a potential solution for the um, conundrum. Sorry, I can only focus on multiple, or on one thing at once. Um, Snaptron style switches, switch domes. 
those don't require soldering. It just requires the PCB to be de oh, PCB to be designed to accept those style uh, switches. So like um, what Zekfu did for his AGZ custom Game Boy Advance, uh, what Nintendo did for their 3DS consoles and Switch Joy Cons. Um, I don't know. Those those are the only examples I have offhand, but. Those, I think, would be fine. And um, if the concern is that those need to be custom ordered, um, good news is that there are aftermarket replacements for the 3DS and Switch Joy-Cons already available on, like, AliExpress and the like. So it would only be a matter of adapting to use that specific button layout, which... The D-pad on the 3DS is the exact same size. Switch doesn't have a D-pad, uh, so unfortunately that won't work, but 3DS is an option. Um, and that being said, all, all you really need is the domes themselves. You can just cut the tape holding them together and uh, use any pattern you want. All right, and I'm gonna set this aside. I'm sure this is a perfectly functional Game Boy Pocket, uh, so I'm gonna reinstall the link port from the this board. But after I run it through the ultrasonic with this. <laughs> Is it empty? It doesn't look empty. I guess it is. That is unfortunate timing. But I guess hopefully I'm done soldering. didn't go so well without flux. Ah. Eh, I'm sure it's fine. I'm never reusing this board anyway, so who gives a hoot if I just yank it off? Oh, loosen up, I didn't even have to. Heh. Oh well. Despite how disgusting this board is, it still has what appears to be a perfectly fine DC jack and uh, headphone jack, so I'll have to salvage those at some point, but I don't really think there's anything else I need off this board besides the cart slot. Okay, anyway, into the junk bin. Man, see that? Look how close that is to the CPU. That's why I don't want to install it until after testing. If I need to get in here to touch up any of the pins on the CPU, I'm going to have zero room to clear any bridges. So, okay. I'm glad I waited on that. I expect a similar situation with the link port, or the cart slot, excuse me. Oh, actually, that one's not so bad. I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna hold off on this as well, anyway, just in case. Um, but in the meantime, the plan is to go get this cleaned up in the ultrasonic cleaner, get all the flux out of here so I can actually actuate all the buttons and, and the bales. Um, and then we should be good to go. Oh, <clears throat> I forgot to order LEDs. <laughs> so, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna just install some some other LEDs I have laying around. Uh, I have to physically go find them though, so I'm gonna do that off camera. But when we come back, this thing will be nice and clean, and uh, we'll be ready to continue the assembly. If there's any egregious errors that need fixing, I will go ahead and, well, I will try to film them. Um, but if I'm just sitting here spinning my wheels trying to figure out why this thing isn't working, of course I'm going to work on it more off camera and then we'll report back. But 
You know me. I'll be honest. I'll let you know what happens. Uh, but in the meantime, plan of action is install three LEDs here. I'm guessing it's for power, charge, and then low battery indication. Um, I don't know what color Frago intends, but I'm just going to use whatever I have on hand. Hopefully three different colors. Uh, <laughs> Once I've got those installed, this thing's taken a bath. I'm gonna inspect it under the microscope for shorts and um, loose solder joints. And then we'll be back here to finish the final assembly. And of course, I still gotta extract the kit from this thing, but I, I have a video on assembling this thing, so it's just the opposite of that. So anyway, until next time, toodles. Okay, and we're back. Uh, so minor change in plans. We're definitely not finishing this today. Um, I neglected to order the proper size battery. This is the closest thing that I have. I'm fairly certain it's not gonna fit. It'll be good enough for testing. Fine, doesn't matter. Um, I, I thought I had smaller cells on hand, but I guess I don't. Whoops, that's my bad. Uh, problem the second is I don't know if I'll be able to get this screen out of this shell without destroying it. I didn't recall that I adhered the lens directly to the LCD. I thought it was, um, yeah, I, I, I didn't realize I had done that. So, um, unfortunately, I don't know if I can extract that. We can still do some testing, but the final assembly, as it were, is going to have to wait, I think. Uh, there we go. So I am fairly certain this goes something like this. And then this Entire mod only works with specific backlight kits because it has a custom ribbon cable interface uh, that is intended to replace this. Before I plug that in though, I need to get some power working and I'm not going to bother splicing on my JST connector for a battery that I'm not permanently installing. Um, so I'm just going to solder this in. Uh, but I need to find a couple quick voltage points. I'm fairly certain that's positive, which would make that negative. And then positive is probably connected to this fuse right here. Nope. Yes. Haha. -ha. Either side doesn't matter, I guess. I don't know which side's the input and output. I um, didn't check. And because the fuse is intact, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then this capacitor I can probably use for ground. You should be right. <laughs> well, I am really tempting fate by uh, hardwiring this in without a disconnect, huh? I'm sure it'll be fine. That's what fuses are for. As long as I get it on the right side of the fuse. Let me double check something. <laughs> uh, it doesn't say. But there's renders. Let me check the renders. Okay. The top of the fuse is the battery side. That's what I thought. So. Solder this in, right? No. Uh -huh. Just like that. And then that, just like that. 
and then my emergency disconnect is right there, I guess. Um, if all goes well, I think we should have a green light. Hey! How about them apples? Okay. Let's try volume. I already have this turned up. There's a speaker. I don't even have to go far. We should get a little ding. Just gonna rest that on those contact pads. Hey! How you like them apples? And let's do power. Or charging. Should have a blue LED. Hey! <laughs> love when it just works and uh, I did check this under the microscope after it came out of the ultrasonic and I did do the um, the the jiggle test as it were on each of the pins where I just took my tweezers and raked it along all the pins to see if any moved there are a couple on the bottom of the CPU that looked like they were gonna move but then they didn't so I'm guessing it was fine uh, I'm Genuinely, genuinely impressed. I had zero touch-up that I needed to do. Like, I'm not saying these things usually work first try, but I usually have to do at least some touch-up. All right. <laughs> oh, shit, that's beautiful, okay. Okay, I'm gonna unplug it from here, because it's apparently, um, if you get this ribbon cable plugged in backwards, uh, things aren't happy, uh, and it's a lot easier to get this side orientated correctly. Let's get a cart slot and a link port installed, and then I think we'll call it a day. that it actually boots carts. Mm, I should have swapped back to the J-tip for this. It's a good thing I already tinned all of these pads though. This actually isn't too bad. I'm not gonna do the drag soldering method because of how close this thing is to the CPU. I'd rather just take it slow and take no chances. Man, I'm so stoked that worked. I, I'm genuinely excited about that. I didn't, I'm not hamming this up for the camera or anything. Um, I am kind of disappointed I didn't capture that whole, whole thing on camera now, but let's be real, it took me about three and a half hours and I was listening to uh, some, some Twitch streamer the whole time. Uh, I was singing very loudly, very poorly, and I burned myself Either two or three times, I genuinely don't remember. The night was kind of a blur. Um, there, there was a strategy involved. It involved maintaining a buzz to, uh, you know, give me a little bit extra stability. Um, that, that's, that's a genuine thing, and my hands are definitely not as stable as they used to be. It's, it, it happens. It's whatever. Um, that's not necessarily the best, most healthiest workaround, but it's also fun, so why not? <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, maintaining a buzz quickly turned into something else entirely, and uh, the rest of the night is history, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I 
additionally, I, um, I did try cleaning up that other link port and there's still quite a bit of schmoo on there. I'm thinking that thing needs a little bit more help than the ultrasonic can provide. Um, I can probably get it cleaned up relatively painlessly with some uh, elbow grease and like a steel brush or something, but that it's not my only link port. I'll just leave that donor board without for now and uh, readdress it later. I'll give this one the nice pretty link port, even though I'm never going to use it. At least it looks good. <gasps> I fucked up. I mean, I messed up. Don't cancel me. YouTube doesn't like that word anymore. But at least it's an hour in. Or so. I uh, tombstoned one of these caps here. Come in, just turn, you jerk. All right, it is nowhere near aligned, but I think it's on the pads and it's not close enough to anything else to matter. So I think we're good. Uh, I think all that's left is to reattach my battery and double check it boots carts. I'm gonna redo this joint so it's got at least a little bit of flux so it's nowhere near as spooky. And here goes nothing. There it is. There it is. Ooh, you know what? I have another one of these screens in an original Game Boy. I know that isn't adhered to the lens. I can probably extract that. Uh, I've got this whole thing upside down. I need to flip this this way. And... <laughs> go, baby, go! Go, baby, go! <laughs> actually need my flash cart for this, but we'll do it anyway, because I forgot that I had a dedicated cart for this. And look at that. Every button's working. <laughs> oh, I'm so stoked. Okay. Um, I kind of have to wait to finish assembling this until at the very least I get a battery. Uh, maybe I can rip something out of a Joy-Con. I don't know. I, either way, I gotta go pause the camera while I sort out this LCD bare minimum. So I'll be back. All right, through several weird miracles, um, it, it's, still, it's still today. Um, the day hasn't changed. I haven't even ordered parts yet. I got a screen though. I'm just using the same backlight kit out of that clear Game Boy Color, and then I found that DMG I had with the same kit and then ripped the screen out of that because that one's held in with a bracket. It was a lot easier to get out than the one that's glued into the Game Boy Color. So now I don't have to worry about ruining that. 
Um, this battery doesn't fit. It's so stupid close though. Like it's the right X and Y size, but it's just, it's too thick. It needs to be about the same height as the cart slot. And this is just, this is too much. Um, I kind of knew that going in, kind of. Like I, I was told um, which battery I needed and I just figured, oh, it's okay. The one I have will fit and it'll totally be fine. Um, it doesn't fit. It's not really close. Uh, so what's going on is I'm going to order a new battery that will fit. And then in the meantime, I'm just going to finish assembly with the next closest thing, which is more or less what this thing was designed for. Um, hopefully this battery is fine. Uh, it is certainly not a fresh cell. Um, it's certainly got some wear and tear on it. In fact, it's not even flat. But, oh no. It's only the aftermarket ones that fit. Ah, oh, nuts! Damn it! Okay. Uh, well, if I didn't have a link port, I think this might fit. <laughs> oh, that is so unfortunate. Um, I guess I can do the rest of the assembly, though. Does this thing... No, it's totally dead. I suppose we can uh, charge it up while I think about my decisions regardless. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Um... Also, aside from the battery, I have totally forgotten to turn on my filming lights. Um, I have these horrifying gold buttons from Extreme Rate that I think I'm going to try. I'm not exactly sold on them, but this thing's coming apart at some point anyway, probably, so it's probably fine. Uh, but otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and continue on with the install here. Uh, I guess lens first, then screen. I guess the lens is what holds the screen in. What the heck is even going on here? Man, that's beautiful. Uh, ooh, I should double check if the light pipe needs to go in first. Oh, no, there's no way. Or, there's no way that it needs to go in first. Not that there's no way to put it in. Uh, that looks very clear. I should have grabbed my microfiber though. That was a poor decision on my part. We're gonna know. So with the lens in, the idea is one of the same ones that I've had with uh, other builds here. Um, and we just adhere the LCD directly to the lens. In fact, it is the exact same build strategy that is... Um, Uh-oh. I don't think I got it lined up right. Uh... No, I guess it's fine. Doesn't feel like it's uh, seated properly. Oh, duh, cause it doesn't hit lens right there. That's okay. Ha! Beautiful. Okay. All right, 
Next, I need this bag. This baggie? There's another baggie. This baggie. Frago was courteous enough to do the 3D prints. I think I shall use his. At the very least, because he made a light pipe and I just figured I was going to fill the hole with hot glue. <laughs> I don't know, that doesn't feel right either. Oh, there it goes. It's just a very tight fit. Okay. Buttons, buttons, buttons. Uh, oh, I'm forgetting something rather important here. I need to go find a speaker, which I thought I left, uh, in the bag that was on my desk, but unfortunately, that didn't happen. Or maybe it did happen and then something else happened. Is it one of these? <sighs> okay, this is Battery management, definitely not it. Touch regulator, definitely not it. Analog comparator, nope. Tech switches, definitely nope. Sorry, guys. A more courteous uploader would pause the video while he takes care of this, but you're stuck with me, and I'm not going to do that. Dang it. Audio amplifier, MOSFET, resistor, resistor. Okay, I guess I am gonna go pause because I have no idea what I did with them. Definitely ordered them. Don't worry, I set them aside in a special place so I wouldn't lose them. Frog snacks. And the bag's taped shut, what is going on? Why would you do this to me, Mauser? You're literally ruining my life right now. Fragile parts. Open carefully. This side up. Secure tray on flat surface before opening. Really, if they're that delicate, it was a bad match for me in the first place. surface. Does this have a little sticky thing on it, or is that just me? Uh, I think that's just me. <laughs> okay. Contacts aimed outward. Doesn't seem to be seating. I don't know, maybe I'm hallucinating. Let's just go with that.
All right, so this is charged up enough that it works. So we're good enough to proceed. Totally forgot membranes. What am I doing? I was thinking about this earlier and I have a set of brass buttons that I kind of want to use, but they are the non membrane versions, which should still work, but then I won't have a matching power button because those definitely don't work. require a slight bit of modification. You know, in the name of making things noise and toit, uh, the membranes aren't exactly drop in. What's going on here? Oh, that's what's going on there. That also needs a cut. Actually, it'd probably be fine without cutting, but now it's definitely more fine. Where's my, how did that happen? Stupid magnets. That needs to be unplugged for now. For the speaker shorts something. Frago printed me, but I also had this printed in centered nylon. And I kind of like the texture of the centered nylon better. Ooh, but it's also a slightly different part. Hopefully it's fine. So, a smarter man than I would have prepared the screws first, because now I get to do it one-handed. Um, this thing is intended to use M2 by 3 screws, which is convenient, because that is exactly what the slate uses. So, I have plenty of choices from uh, all the screws that I tried demoing. I think we're gonna go with these ones. No, I've got better ones. These ones, yeah. So we 
just need some uh, wafer head screws. Nice flat things here. And these ones are Torx, which makes them better. However, unfortunately, they require the correct size bit <laughs> or you can't get them tight. There we go. Ah! It shifted and now everything is misaligned. Can I do that? This is a little tedious, but admittedly the worst part is that the speaker is magnetic and keeps trying to attach to the Type-C port, I think. But also it doesn't, I don't know if it's seating properly. I think, the corners are getting jammed. I'm just going to shave them down just a little bit. Uh-oh. I shaved that one down just a little bit too much. It's a good thing I have extras. I think we need a screw here as well. You'll have to forgive me, there are not any assembly instructions for the shell, so I am winging it. It does look relatively uh, straightforward though. And then, assuming I had a battery that fit properly, <laughs> uh, we'd be good to go. Lap it together and uh, babs you ante. This is too thick, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll order a battery, is what it is. My failure to plan, but I can still demo it with the back off and then just pretend. I can get this stupid thing plugged in. There we go. Oh, that's so good. Uh, where is my super suit? There it is. That in there, that is a machined brass knob. Um, oh, that's kind of tight. Oh, that was weird. When I test fit it earlier, it was fine. 
Oh. Yeah. The problem is that I installed it backwards. There we go. Ta-da. <laughs> That's so cool. Now I can play the same game I play on every other Game Boy, but on this Game Boy. That's fun. This is fun. I like this. This is good. Um, the controls are a little bit awkward. They feel kind of crappy, but that is 100% my fault because I am using most of my concentration to hold the battery in and not jostle the cart um, because I don't have the rear shell on. That's 100% my fault. It's just regular SP buttons, it should feel like an SP. Also, I'm not really fond of these specific buttons. I think we're gonna, I think I'm gonna swap them out. I'll do that later though. There's zero point in doing it right now. That's why I had the other set of membranes on my desk. I kind of figured that would happen. And then I've got a nice new set of funny playing buttons here. Ah, oh, I'm disappointed I can't finish it today, but it is what it is. Of course I defeated all these guys. We'll go for a wild battle. There was. I thought this included some sort of in, uh, controls for this backlight kit, but I don't know what they are. Oh, select and down does brightness. Ha! And I'm pretty sure that's all this kit supports. So, oh, just kidding. I forgot this thing did pixel grid. <laughs> Man, I'm so stoked. I'm so stoked to get this finished. Okay, so I guess, um, I guess let me finish up here because if I do my final thoughts during the final part of this video, it's gonna be in at least a week from now. Um, and so I might have forgotten some of the notes that I had, but I do have notes from this install as this is a beta test. A beta test would be useless without feedback, I think. Um, and so far my feedback is it's, it does, it, it's does exactly what it says it does on the tin. Um, this is fantastic. This is really well done. Uh, the, the level of care that Frago has put into this thing, despite being the first public iteration, um, I know it's, it's still a prototype and it's like a closed beta sort of thing. Uh, so we'll... it's not exactly public, but that being said, there is a level of uh, care and detail on every single part of this thing that I genuinely, genuinely appreciate. Um, the biggest problem I had with assembly is that it doesn't look very intuitive to do. Uh, it looks like with how some things are set up, you want to approach it from a certain angle. And 
that's what I ended up doing for a lot of these things, and I made it more difficult on myself than I should have. Um, I need one more screw. I'm just gonna fully assemble it now and test out the power switch, I guess. Um, so what I mean by that is with the SP style tact switches on the front, I wanted to do everything in a different order than Frago suggested. And that's just, I don't know. Um, Frago has way more experience assembling these things than I do. And that is probably never gonna change. So if Frago says, hey, you should do this, this, then this, I think it's a good idea to listen to Frago. Um, and the only reason I deviated was because I thought I had a plan. Obviously it worked out. Um, we're, we're totally fine, uh, but I deviated from the plan and there were definitely moments of panic as a result. Uh, so, that being said, my recommendation to you, to anyone who's not Frago, um, if you're looking at Frago's instructions, and oh my god, that feels so much better with the back on. Um, these buttons are still a little bit squishy, but I'm guessing that's the, the glow-in-the-dark membranes that I used. I kind of wanted to get practice cuts in, you know, figure out, figure that before I do something else. Um, yeah, anyway, sorry. If you're looking at the instructions and you're thinking of making modifications to the instructions, you know, you're, you're going to assemble it in a different order than what Frago suggests. Fine. Okay. It's, it is what it is. As long as you've got all of the parts installed on the board at the end, uh, you know, no shorts, everything's connected, everything's in the right place, blah, blah, blah. It genuinely does not matter what order you assemble this entire thing in. That's it's just kind of how it is. Um, that being said, Frago does include several instructions in, uh, instructions, several tests in his instructions, uh, so that you can test the circuit along the way. So, like, you install the power components and you can test, make sure that this thing is generating the voltages that it needs for the CPU and the backlight kit, you, you know, make sure it's charging the batteries and whatnot. And that's great, that's fantastic, that's wonderful, because if you do it in that order and you do those tests and there is a problem, you have a lot less to rule out. Like if there's not even a CPU on this thing, <laughs> we know the CPU can't be the issue, right? That's, that's exactly how it works. That's fantastic, I love that, that's great. I didn't do that because I veered off the path and um, while it worked out for me, that was a, a poor decision on my part. I got lucky. Um, oh yeah, power switch is totally fine. It's, it's recessed, so it's kind of hard to hit accidentally, but it's also very, there's a lot of tactile feedback. You know, you know you've hit it. It's good. Um, mine's, wait, wait, does this thing have proper power pathing? I bet it does. That seems like something Frago would do. Ah, oh, Nuts. Okay, it doesn't boot without a battery. That's a shame. That makes me wonder if um, you can do plain charge with this thing. I have not looked into it whatsoever. Okay. That's a shame, but it is what it is. Realistically, who's going to build the smallest Game Boy Color ever made only to tether it? <laughs> <laughs> like that's just silly um but in my particular case because i don't have a battery it's it's what i have to do uh actually i don't know that i'm gonna follow this up i think i'm just gonna end here because it's i mean it's fully assembled everything's working we tested it individually the only thing that's not working is i don't have a battery that fits inside of the thing that can power this but i have batteries that can power it and i can assemble it i just don't you know, I don't, I don't have everything. Um, but let's try it with some custom cards. Oh, yeah, that fits great. That's wonderful. Uh -huh. Of course, all that fits fine. 
Kitch bent one's a little tight, but that could just be Kitch bent. Everything else feels fine. Uh, orange glows cart fits great. And that's all the custom carts I have at my desk. Oh, except for this one. That's definitely a custom cart. And that fits fine. Not that I expected anything different. Man, I'm so stoked. I am so stoked. I'm so bummed that I don't have a battery that fits. I can't believe I did that. But yeah, I, I, every cart fits great. Zero issues. Um, I suppose now I shall go on a brief tangent because like two hours ago in, in this video, uh, I said I'd elaborate on that later and then I didn't elaborate on that. Uh, so the reason, uh, the reason I got it in the colors that I did, um, aside from just personal preference, I, I like this. I like two-tone colors. Um, anytime I'm getting something anodized for the first time, I get it in red. If I'm getting a prototype and I'm custom ordering parts, I get them in red. Because every single time, red is different. I don't know what it is in particular about the anodization process. Um, maybe it's just like red is really concentrated, so maybe they use a little bit of different amount of dye each time, or um, they don't dip the part for the exact same amount of time each time, whatever. The red always comes out a little bit different. So I like ordering that because it's just a visual indicator to me that, hey, the prototype you ordered is red. It's, it's a prototype. And that being said, these two Game Boys, they're both in red, right? These are not the same shade red, despite me using the exact same um, colors and finish. These are both bead blasted, anodized matte red. And look at that, they're different colors. So the reason I go two-tone is the same reason why I get red. Uh, because if the colors are gonna be different, I might as well get something way totally different and then I don't have to worry about things not matching. Um, and in general, I like gunmetal and I like red, so I get gunmetal red. <laughs> it's not that complicated, but I don't know, just the thing. Um, but one thing that I wanted to draw attention to, and this is something that Frago has done so much better than I did. Why am I missing a screw? Did that just come out? That's a problem. Uh, <laughs> okay, so prototype. Just, just prototype things. We're working on it. Don't worry about it. The cart slot on Frago's design is so much better than the cart slot on mine. Like, this just goes in, and it works, and it clicks in, and it's happy, and it's nice and flush, and there's just no extra bullshit to deal with. Whereas mine is a little tight. A little tight during the uh, insertion there. Um, I'm working on it. Like I said, you know, just prototype things. This so one of the reasons why this isn't released yet, um, one of the biggest reasons, um, but yeah, it's, it's a thing. We're working on it. It's great, but that's why red and gunmetal. I just, I like them. It's not that complicated. I, maybe I alluded to something that it's not, it's just personal preference really, but it is what it is. And now I have a mat, I have, I have, matching Game Boys. I have a normal sized Game Boy Color in my custom shell, and then I have the mini Game Boy Color in, in Frago's custom shell. And I just, I can't, I can't emphasize enough how much smaller this silly thing is. It's amazing. Um, I have, there it is, Game Boy Micro right here. This thing is pretty much micro size. Uh, the thickness is about the same, the height is the same, uh, but the width is not. The micro is a little bit smaller, just a little bit, just a little bit skittier. But that being said, the micro takes way smaller carts, so I, that's not exactly apples to apples, right? Like this, if this fits in here, that's gonna stick out a lot, well, 
about that much if it were to actually properly fit. And then, which one's smaller, huh? Yeah. Whereas Frago's, half the freaking volume of the thing is the cartridge. It's amazing. I, uh, this is, I'm so stoked about this. I just want to keep talking about it even though I have nothing left to say. It's so good. All right, I guess I gotta end here. Um, oh, one, one more, one more thing. I can't remember if I mentioned this at all at any point in this video. I think I did, and I think I said something along the lines of, oh, I'll elaborate on that later, as well as the color thing. I was working on a very similar design to Frago's. Um, in fact, I got far enough to make hardware prototypes uh, and as you can see, mine is about the same size as Frago's. Um, mine actually ended up working out to be quite a bit larger with the shell that I I don't have. Um, I think I made some. I don't think I kept them. I think I got rid of them because they weren't like high quality prints or anything. It was just, you know, the, the crap that my uh, FDM printer, whatever the hell it is, the Ender three or something, I don't know, whatever. Um, yeah, I was making my own. My thought process was uh, I started designing this back in the early pocket color days where the method that I and uh, Hazi had pioneered was you'd take a Game Boy Color, you just cut the top off the Game Boy Color, and then you take a Game Boy Pocket, you cut the bottom off the Game Boy Pocket, and you, you marry them and throw it in a shell, and it works great. Um, my thought process was, well, what do you do with the leftover Game Boy Color and Game Boy Pocket half? And so that's why I made this. Um, the intent was, uh, and I actually took a, a totally different approach to this than Frago did. Um, my idea was I'm going to take the 2.2 inch TFT screens. He did the 2.5, 2.45. Uh, so his screen ended up being a lot bigger while the rest of the Game Boy is a lot smaller and it Overall, it's just much better proportioned, I think. Um, but mine, I took that 2.2 inch screen and then I scaled the rest of the Game Boy to the screen. So if the stock screen is 2.6 inches and the replacement is 2.2, everything else is proportionally the same size. Um, I never finished this for at least two different reasons. Uh, the first being, as it turns out, I just don't really care for Game Boy Pockets and I can't bring myself to work on this thing again. There is something wrong with this specific board. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's an assembly issue or a circuit issue. It worked at some point. It does not work any longer. Um, I had plenty of extra room to work with, so I broke things out. This is using like the stock amp and the volume wheel and, and um, it's designed for a stock power supply, but I had intended to use them with GBPPs uh, so that it has battery charging and, and, you know, you jam a Game Boy micro battery in here, it, it works, you use the full-size cart slot. Anyway, all that being said, um, I, I just kind of wanted to talk about this thing because I'm never going to get the opportunity to talk about it again because I'm just, I'm simply not working on it. I abandoned this thing years ago. Uh, and that's not changing. I'm not going to pick this thing back up and continue development. So in the off chance you have heard that I was making one of these, I was. Um, Frago didn't copy me or anything like that. Um, and there's no, there's no bad blood there. Um, I am never going to work on this thing again. I'm not even going to open source it because it doesn't work. Um, there are design issues with the shell itself like one of them because I'm using the full size cart reader it's actually through hole so there's all these um button uh, uh, uh pins in the way of the tact switch buttons so you know I thought you know I thought Frago's was difficult to assemble mine's going to be way more difficult to assemble as a result because you have to assemble the cart slot trim it flush insulate it and then install the buttons uh, and you, you can't use hot plate for that. It's impossible because once the cart slots on, it's in the way of the heart hot plate. Um, so yeah, I, I was working on that. 
Um, it seemed like a good idea at the time, but I just... Oh, here we go. Here's some older PCBs. Oh, my bag broke. And take a look at this thing. Um, I don't know. It was all right. I think I think I could have done better. Um, I'm gonna flip this board over and prepare yourself in case you're the type to have a physical reaction to cringe because. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I. I don't know. I didn't know what I was doing. I used Gekio's schematic and I literally just copy pasted it onto this board and then routed everything. Uh, I only ever assembled the one and then I did nothing else. Um, I had multiple boards made up. I did two revisions. I made this first one, this blue one, and like hours after ordering, like hours after it went into production, not after ordering, but went into production, I realized I had made a very critical error with one of the, um, with, with something. I don't remember what. Uh, so I ended up having to reroute a significant portion of the board. Looking at the differences on the back, I'm guessing I forgot the, oh no, I didn't forget. I had the diode arrays in here and then I tried salvaging the diode arrays from my board and they fell apart. And so I just couldn't assemble this if I wanted to because I don't know where to get those diode arrays. Uh, so I made a new revision that just uses either the diode arrays or um, standalone diodes so that I could actually assemble it. Because this is a Game Boy Pocket after all. So it uses a um, button matrix instead of a common ground, blah, blah, blah. But. Anyway, I thought I thought it was a super cool project at the time, uh, but it immediately didn't work, and I kind of lost motivation. Oh, I didn't realize I made the whole board smaller. I forgot about that. That that must have been the error. I had too much extra on the bottom because all of the parts are still in the same place. Oh well, doesn't matter. Brief history lesson. Um, yeah, so this is the only time you're ever gonna see this thing. Um, I'm never gonna work on this project again. I'm never gonna continue it and I'm never gonna release it because I can't bring myself to release something that I don't know works. And I know that the one I assembled does not work. So, transitive property something something, I don't know. Either way, Fraggos is sick as hell. I am so glad that um, I'm so glad that he had the motivation to finish a project that I had started work at a similar project to what I had started working on because I do now that I have this in hand I'm kind of disappointed that I never finished mine but this is just so much better than what I was going to do that it's not even funny and uh I'd feel weird about going back to mine because there's so much stuff that I'd want to change after seeing how Frago did it. It's just so much better. And at that point, it'd just be a clone of his. So I'm just not going back to it. It is what it is. And uh, if, if you're into it, um, check out Frago's. Uh, so I will go ahead and throw some links in the description. As of time of filming, I am totally making this stuff up because there are no links. <laughs> uh, none of this is public. This is private beta. Uh, so all of the documentation is in a private GitHub repository, which I assume will become a public GitHub repository at some point. And at that point, I will go ahead and link to it. Um, but Frago's videos and such on this stuff, um, Frago's going to make his own video for assembly uh, and presumably some other stuff. Um, I can't imagine he's only going to assemble. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, so I, I will, I, I recommend checking out Frago's video on this, uh, as well as his repository, um, if you're interested in this sort of thing. Uh, Price-wise, I have no idea what this is going to run. Uh, I think a fully assembled Frog Boy color, um, if you order everything through PCB Way, so you get the PCB Way shared links, 
Um, you get the CNC machine shell and a partially assembled PCB from PCB Way. I think you're you're looking at about five hundred dollars, um, and that still requires you to bring your own Game Boy Color and swap over the CPU. Um, this thing I expect to be slightly cheaper. Uh, if nothing else, it's a smaller board and a smaller shell, so the machining costs and um, board fab fees are going to be a little bit lower, but I don't know if partial assembly will be an option with how condensed this board is, with how close together everything is. Um, so, yeah, it's probably going to be a little bit cheaper. Um, in my particular case, I, 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 I can't... I can't tell you. I ordered the shell separately outside of PCBWay's shared program uh, as well. Frago just sent a board. Um, he sent a board and some of the prints and the lens. Uh, it's my understanding that he will be selling the lenses um, on, I think he's got an Etsy or something or a Tindy or something. I don't know. I'll have, I'll have a link in the description though. Um, just follow that link and you can grab the lens. That is about one of the only parts that is kind of difficult to acquire otherwise. Um, like, obviously, the shell and the PCB are also custom, but where, where do you order a custom lens? Like, that's not really... That's not really a thing unless you're ordering in bulk. And I'm going to wager, if you're watching this video, you're not ordering in, bul in bulk. <laughs> uh, but Frago will off offer them get you taken care of that way and then from there you need so what you need the donor Game Boy Color the custom shell uh, the custom PCB all of the parts for the PCB uh, the bill of materials for this PCB I think I ended up paying about 150 bucks for all the parts but I bought enough parts for three separate builds um, there's minimum order quantities on most of the parts so I would anticipate paying you know probably 50 to 60 bucks shipped for all of the components before assembly um all in all I think you're looking at like at least a $300 Game Boy is is that worth it to you I mean if you want a really small Game Boy I I definitely recommend it this thing is this, this is really nice. I'm really stoked about this. Um, yeah, I, I gotta go order a battery now. Okay, that's enough. That's enough rambling. I gotta get out of here. Um, Frago, I am sorry in advance. Um, and by advance, I mean not advance because we're well past that now. Um, I'm sorry for the length of this video, but you know what to expect. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, for everyone else, um, this thing is really sick. I, re I highly recommend it. Um, this is great. I love it. I'm so stoked. I'm so excited. I, I'm just... I'm giddy. I'm like a kid in a candy store right now. Anyway, I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching, and uh, keep on keeping on or something like that.